bro, something I've always appreciated about you is how you receive feedback. Uh, have, have you gotten, always been that way? I have gotten better at it. Recently? Or just, uh, I would say, yeah, I'm, we've, we started the company three and a half years ago, and I, uh, I've i gotten better at receiving feedback in that time. And I will tell you that it is not natural. <laughs> receiving feedback well is not, very, that ain't natural. Like, right. it's not natural. But it is a tremendous gift to yourself if you can learn to receive feedback, which we're going to talk about today. And with with our dynamic, yeah, does it still trigger all the same stuff inside of you when we have conversations uh-huh. and we yep. pick back? Yep. You just handle it differently? Yep. <laughs> I'm totally triggered. <laughs> it's like, I'm triggered. I get triggered. Okay. Right. Sorry. Right. <laughs> the difference is the acknowledgement of the feeling and then you set it aside. Um, like I've heard you know, champions and they say, you know, do you get nervous? I'm like, yeah, I get nervous. And then I go, okay, now I'm going to go do my work. So I still have, uh, it's, I would say it's shorter. Mm-hmm. It's briefer. It's not as, it's not as harsh, but there's still something in me that I go, yeah, I don't like that. And then I go, okay, well, but is it true? And you ask other questions around it instead of just writing your emotion, which is yep. rarely <laughs> a helpful thing to do. <laughs> what about you? How, are you better at feedback than you used to be? I'm thinking of when you played college basketball. Oh gosh. I mean, it's dramatic. It's, it's a, it's a 180 yeah. in my world. Um, and I love this book. We're going to talk about the book's called thanks for the feedback. And it's in my top 10. And mm. I think it's a, a really deep message, but for me personally, in my story of everything is a personal attack. Uh, nobody, in, any feedback is only meant to hurt you, not to help you whether it was the source that was giving it, I didn't trust, whether it was the way they said it. Yeah. And so when I read this book, it, it, it didn't necessarily make me great at it overnight, but it gave me the framework of saying, okay, this isn't just my problem. It kind of normalized like this is hard for everybody Yeah. and helped me point, figure out like, oh, here's the, here's the point where I usually go off the rails. Um, yeah. well, I was going to say, I'm I really early. early. Yeah. I'm and, on the, yeah. And then for me, I think one benefit, if you just go through life stuff, whether it's parenting, relationship things, like the more life experience you have, sometimes that just calms you and humbles you enough to say, I'm willing to learn whenever possible. Yeah. And but I get that's less- a really mature way of saying it. There's a lot of people who just get worse and they get worse. And they get worse. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you that, yes, sure, you yes. can mature into that. But there's also people, and this book talks about mm. what is feedback? How does it work? How do we typically react? What are techniques to, to to process it? But I also think that there's a certain segment of people, and we'll talk about it, and generally it's not the people who are listening to the show, but there is a, there is a segment that is very unhealthy, and any feedback that does not confirm their belief, that does not mm-hmm. reaffirm who they are and how they view the world, is wrong, is negative. There, there's a certain mindset of, of people and many of them run for office, but it's like, you know, it, it's, it, it is that, that I cannot be wrong. There's no way that person could be wrong. In the same sense or the same sentence, well, that person could never be right mm. by what they say. And I or, love it. Or it's now my moral obligation to change their mind, silence them. Mm. I think it's one thing to react in a big way. It's another to go on the attack. Yeah. And so the good news is that our audience is not that. So while those extremes exist, we're going to yeah. hang out. And I think the, the big middle reality that most of us live in. But for me, the, the premise of this book, if you haven't read it, is growing up, I feel like there, I was taught that if I was getting feedback or coaching, the way that was delivered was the most important thing. Hmm. Meaning, if they didn't say it clearly, kindly, you almost had permission to not receive it and give them feedback on, man, if you just would have said that nicer, or if you would ask me more questions that typically we get hung up on the deliverer yeah. of the information. Whereas what's great about this book is it says that doesn't matter. It does, but it doesn't. That You need to become really good at receiving it regardless of the form it comes in. Because if it can make you better and there's some truth in that, your inability to sit in the discomfort of the, the, the person that's delivering or the way they're delivering it is at the end of the day only hurting you. So there's three, there's, you touched on two of the three actually from the book, which are these these triggers that block feedback yep. and so i think that for those listening or watching the next time you feel 
any sort of anger towards another person because they said something to you. That could be a police officer. <laughs> it could be your spouse. It could be a kid. It could be a stranger or whoever. But you touched on one, which is um, the relationship trigger. Like, who are you to tell me that? Mm. Right. You can't tell me that. Uh, another is uh, identity trigger. Like, I feel threatened. Like, my, my, my identity is threatened by what you just said and how I view myself. And then the other is just a truth. Fit. Like, I'm not receiving that because there's no way that that could be true. And, and those are all really innate human reactions instead of responses of why we don't react or, or take feedback the way we want to. Tell me about the different kinds of feedback because there's evaluation, there's coaching, there's appreciation. Um, tell me how, which one of those have you always been good at or not good at? And, and how have you improved in those? Um, I started out bad at all of them. Um, <laughs> just because, I mean, it was, uh, in my world growing up, there was so much change. We moved a lot. I mean, yeah. it was just constant. You know, yeah. 27 houses, a bunch of different schools. And until my life kind of settled in middle school and high school that I just didn't trust stuff. Like if, if somebody was coming to my world, they were probably there for themselves. It, they mm -hmm. weren't going to stay. Like it was, it was all I knew. And I hadn't had a chance yet to gain awareness to like, wait, why am I this way? I was mm -hmm. asking those questions. I was just you weren't open living my life. You weren't open to really any feedback from anybody I mean, it it came my way because it had to. If I was on a sports team or in school, mm -hmm. like it was happening, I just I didn't trust it. I wasn't receiving it. Oftentimes, it triggered me in a negative way. Uh, for me, it was probably mainly the relationship trigger of I don't I don't trust you. The feedback you're giving is not for my benefit. It's you're trying to get something for me. Like this was just kind of a story in my head. Yeah, and so. I don't know if that story changed as much, but when I got to college, I realized this isn't helping me. So even, even though I still have the same core beliefs, I at least have to, based off of trial and error, have to try something different. Meaning I need to not respond negatively to a coach when they tell me to do something differently. Yeah. Like step one for me is being able to just sit there and let it happen without trying to fight back. <laughs> right. Which as I talk about, sounds extreme, but like, I think a lot of us no, have I'm some internal reaction. Mine just, load out in a not, a good, <laughs> not a good way <laughs> pretty quick mine most of time. somehow got to the end of my arms with my hands and they started moving really okay. bad that's called punching people yeah. um well you had, you and i in preparation for today you would you'd sort of i don't know if it's off the cuff or or, or whatever but it was really well done you had identified sort of the scale of how people react to feedback and the first one was really aggressive avoidance which is what i think you're talking about which is yeah. the minute and I'm, you know, I, I am frankly probably most guilty of this with m my own wife of like the aggressive ones, like this feedback is not going to be good. And so I'm just like already ready to be like, no, that's not true. Shut it down. Well, she's like, that's a nice shirt. I'm like, no, it's not. You know, like, <laughs> wait a minute. You know, you're proud. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm just like, like, it's this default to, oh, this is going to be criticism. Right. Or there's other people like uh, other family members, I'll say of not, not my own immediate, but like parents, siblings of like, I'm just right. I'm, I'm ready to be defensive. Mm. So aggressive avoidance is that's a very emotional reactionary defensive. And it, it doesn't, it's not even a response. It's just like, if I throw something at you, you're going to throw your hands up. Mm. It's more of a reaction. Yeah. Um, and that can keep you really stuck. But then you talked about another one, which is sort of like people who just don't get much feedback. They're just sort of like, yeah, I'm good. And um, I'm going to kind of stay the same, same way that, that I've always been. And, and I don't really need feedback because uh, I'm okay. That's a pretty dangerous place to be in as well. I think you can have decent relationships in that place. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's less, you know, it, the, the other side where I was, when I was younger and a young professional, I was very, it was somewhat competitive. People didn't want to be around you. It was effort to be your friend mm -hmm. at that point. Um, but in this ignorant bliss, you and I've, I've, I've progressed through these. It was, I think I'm fine now. I'm good enough. I got to a place of comfort to some degree yeah. that I, I couldn't fully understand the additional benefit of getting better at this. Yeah. I was really celebrating the win of going from where I was to yeah. at least to that point, which yeah. was progress. Yeah. But we, I find a lot of advisors are, are hanging in this spot that they think they receive feedback well, but they really don't. They're not really looking to grow. They're holding on to average. And, and so I think a lot of people fall into this category. Yeah. 
which is not an extreme in, in the negative sense, but it's still, it holds you back a lot. Yeah. So again, you're not aggressively pushing against it, but you're also then not pursuing it. That's right. And uh, oftentimes you get the same result. So this is where the scale continues. You'll see it at, at the healthiest part of the scale is very, very different than sort of, you know, uh, sort of, I'm thinking of the inside out to movie with the, which where that the emotion is where it just sort of sit, it's like indifference right that's okay. been like the talk of our office uh, so we all have we kids. all go as a team <laughs> and just leave our that. kids at home and go first that's right so i'm going to go by myself later just for some it's cheaper than counseling <laughs> that's right um like i said maybe 10 times from the counseling um it's only funny because it's true that's right all right the next one is sort of like a minimal openness like okay i'm going to receive some and i think that's what you're touching on is like hey i'll get some but then you don't really change you don't really take it to heart let's go to like the healthiest one can i because, say something about yeah, minimal yeah, openness yeah. I feel this a lot when I go to like conferences and at times I'll, I'll go and I'll speak, um, or do a breakout session. And there's always some advisors there that, uh, they're willing to hang in the conversation, but they're posturing with, yeah. uh, unjustified confidence in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's an interesting group. And, and we, we run into this group when we coach too, where it's like some reason they think they've arrived when they're, they're way far from it. So they're willing to have the conversation. They're willing to meet at stuff, but somehow they're, I don't know if it's quite, it's not pride. It's fake it till you make it. There's something there. And I was there as a young advisor when it was like my mid twenties. I was like, Hey, I've done some stuff, but I'm also still pretty intimidated by other people yeah. and, and want to be perceived in a certain way. It, and that's hard for me, especially for us as we coach advisors. Cause it's like, you always have an answer on why you're doing it that way. Um, you're, you're paying us to get to coach you, but for some reason you're not like, hey, if there's a better way, I'm fully open to it. Yeah, yeah. And so, so there's this weird area in there to where I think as as if you're listening to this and you're saying, oh, I'm totally open to feedback, but you're you do you feel like there's a chance that you're overconfident for some reason when you don't have the business you want to have, or it's there's really no facts around you to support your level of confidence. Yeah. I think that's where we then try to move to the final stage, which some of the most impressive business owners and advisors I meet 100% are the quietest at the table. Mm. And they're like, oh, that's a great idea. I love that. Like they're, they get to this last one, which is just this ongoing pursuit of information and perspective. Yeah. And in this place, you're, you, you feel relaxed, humble, yeah. um, can receive anything and be like, oh, that's a good point. I never thought about that myself yeah. that way. Like yeah. you're actually asking people to tell you how they experience you. Yeah which can be one of the most uncomfortable conversations you have. Um, but if we can all <laughs> yeah. pursue that, I think that's the ultimate goal. I think of those who avoid going to the doctor. And then there's this uh, friend of mine that went to this, like they don't just run a physical that it's like two days of tests on you. And they come back with everything about you that you could want mm-hmm. or, you know, ever want to know about your cancer risk and your blood work and your nutrient levels and, eyes and i mean just your bone density and it's like every test they could so there's this sort of like oh i'm fine i'm not i don't need to go to the doctor to all the way to like no i'm gonna go pursue and and i'm gonna hope they find something yeah that's the difference between i'm good good. and no i want you to go i want you to find stuff Mm. why because i want you to find stuff i want you to find what is wrong with me that is a very very different posture and i would say that for 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 the for this to happen in a much easier way is I am a way more open as an example, as we kind of circle back to the sort of, we talked about me receiving feedback from you is I am way more open to receiving feedback. If I know that at your core, you have my best interests mm-hmm. and you're not trying to win, mm-hmm. right? You're just saying, I, 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 we don't need to argue about it. We, I, you know, it's, we can, we can still discuss it. You're allowed to disagree with me. Mm-hmm. And regardless of how you receive this, I still think you're doing a good job, but, and then hard truth. Yeah. Right. Like then I go, okay, like I'll, I'll receive that. And I also think that there has to be space and feedback to say, I receive that. I disagree with it, but I receive that versus like every time someone gives you feedback, they, what they're really saying is if you don't, if you don't agree with me, then, you know, we have problems. Yeah. I think giving yourself the permission to be like, oh, great. Thanks. But I don't have to do anything about it. Yeah. And even, and this is in, in work I've done, as a kind of a people pleaser and a past leader that was like, no, I want to lead for people to be happy and like me versus like lead to results and yeah. best outcomes for everybody is that somebody can share information with you about something they don't like about you. 
you can receive it and be like, huh, but I'm, I'm not going to prioritize changing that and sit in the tension of like, that's just the way it is. Hmm. Like that your, your goal in life, yeah. like you, awareness does not have to lead to action every single time. Yeah. We want to adjust and adapt for people around us. But like, if, if somebody says there's something about you fundamentally that bothers me yeah. and you're like, that, that feels more of like a core thing. Like you don't like the way I laugh. Like, Oh, okay. Did you no. about that today. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just kidding. No, you don't. You don't. But it, but it is a good reminder that one of the reasons that people are resistant to feedback is they feel like, gosh, I have to please everybody. No. But I do think that there's something about we'll receive that. We'll consider it. Good to know. I mean, I think about this as an umpire, umpire a lot on weekends and someone will give me a feedback. A coach will say, hey, can I ask you about that? And I go, yeah. And I always ask this when they approach me. I go, what's your question, coach? Because like, and they're going to ask me a question and I go, well, this is what I saw. Okay, great. Like, and then you move on. Yeah. Or it doesn't mean like, oh, what do you want me to do next? <laughs> That's right. Right. That's not feedback. Feedback is not like, oh, just tell me what to do and I'll change it because yeah. you can't live that way. Yeah. But I would say that the the core of thanks for the feedback is that, I, that you're open to it, that if you want to become a different version of yourself, which I think we all do, mm-hmm. then feedback has to be a part of that. You cannot become a different version of yourself unless you get different inputs mm-hmm. and then you consider you know, am I going to take that input and do something with it? Or am I going to reject it and, and, and move on to another option? Yeah. But no person who's listening to the show wants to be the same person a year from now. You want to be a different person in a positive way. And I just don't know how that happens unless you read a book that tells you something, you go to a conference, you get coaching, you know, you put yourself in a situation where someone's going to say, hey, I want to tell you something that I see. Yeah. And they might be right and you might need to receive that. Well, they might be wrong and you might go, I appreciate that feedback. I'm going to go and do the same thing I was doing before, right? Yeah. One thing I've enjoyed being around a lot of advisors and entrepreneurs is you start seeing like what, what things are just true. And one of the things that is true of all the people that I would say, man, someday I want to, I want to lead like them. I want to have an efficient business like them. Is that they're constantly getting inputs. Yeah. It's maybe team members they've raised up that are overseeing something. So, you know, they can kind of be more of that visionary role, but if we ask advisors and we do this a lot, I would say 95% say they want to be something different sure. in the future. Yeah. Yet maybe only 30% of advisors have actions that match that. Yeah. And we get advisors that come to coaching and they get excited and they get this little jolt and they tweak a couple of things and they go back to doing the same thing. I was thing. just going to say that there's also this level of feedback of like, I'll, yeah, I'll change that. Oh, yep, I need to do that. And I'll stop doing that. But then when it gets kind of that next layer, they're like, I did it. All right. Well, um, thanks, guys. I mean, it is. We've seen people hit the eject button and they're just like, I'm out. Why? And I think, I think it's because it, like, we got beyond the easy stuff to some like harder stuff. Or they just were sl- just satisfied enough that they made an effort and they can yeah. rest again. Yeah. Which is fine. You know, we're not shaming any people that choose that. But what I know, and we can share just because of the exposure we get to so many advisors and business owners, is that, but the best of us. Keep going. Keep and that's going. not even them just making the most money. It's just they're the most aware. They have the, the life balance we all want. All of those things is for them, feedback is constant. Yeah. They're never graduating from it. Yeah. And, and the most successful advisors in the country I've been around, I mean, there's just one guy I've met at a conference. I don't know if he was out of Atlanta, had four coaches for different parts of his life. Yeah. Like he was just wanted to be so aware and challenged yeah. to not revert to an old behavior or yeah. um, sit in a blind spot for too long. Yeah. And so, that, I don't think any of us can argue that, that the most aware of us that are getting the most constant feedback. And so for me, that's constant coaching, that's community, that's counseling, that's mm-hmm. friend stuff mm-hmm. that I think as you listen to this, one practical exercise is go to somebody, you know, and trust that's known you for a while and ask, how do you experience me? And just good give them full permission. Good and bad. Good yeah. and bad. Yeah. And the other version is what in your life right now, outside of your efforts, if it's like, I read a lot. Okay. Well, kind of, that gives you a little spurts of awareness but it's still going through your own filter yeah, yeah what in your life are you involved in a study group is it a coaching community that you are saying i need constant feedback for the rest of my life because it's going to make me better if you can buy into that and make it a priority you're, you're going to go way farther than you ever have it'll be uncomfortable but it is a truth that everybody that has reached a certain level that we all say man that'd be great to get there someday all have in common and so why are any of us that have not reached that point not fully embracing it. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, brother.